I'm Sir Tap Tap, and let's play Eschatos. Are you ready to play Eschatos, Parker? Yeah. All right. This is a region-free Xbox 360 shoot 'em up. Um, it is not an arcade port, though it does contain two Wonder Swan conversions: um, Judgment Silver Sword and Cardinal Sins. Um, let's just give you a quick peek on these. I don't haven't played these as much. Oops. Whatever. Any game mode is fine. Um, the games aren't exactly lookers, like, for pixel art standards, I don't, I don't know. I guess maybe it's, I have no idea what Wonder Swan games look like, so, is that an 8-bit system? Uh, I've never, Wonder Swan Color. I have never owned a non-Nintendo or Sony handheld device that I'm aware of. No, I'm pretty sure not. Well, I had some of those Tiger handheld things. Those are god-awful. Anyway, um, see, so yeah, it has those original Wonder Swan games, um, those... Seem fairly popular as far as shoot 'em ups go, anyway. So that's a nice bonus. They're complete games, just you know, portable shoot 'em ups. Um, main game here is considerably flashier here. A lot of different game modes in this. Let's just jump right into original and easy mode. This is a bullet hell shooter, but uh, don't let that scare you too much. If you like standard old style shoot 'em ups, um, it's really not bullet hell style um, in normal mode here. Parker, please get your butt out of the microphone's frontal area. Very rude. So, um, yes. <coughs> Parker. So the way this game works, basically, is that you got your straight shot here and your wide shot. And, uh, if you press both buttons or you use the right trigger, you got this little bullet erasey deal here that erases bullets, obviously. In advanced mode, erasing bullets gives you these little score trinkets, so advanced mode has much more advanced scoring, as you might imagine. The normal mode is a lot simpler. I'll show you a peek of normal mode, or of advanced mode, whenever we die. I'll probably show you maybe 10-15 minutes of normal mode. The game, uh, regular gameplay, or playthrough, takes maybe about a half hour, I would say. Um, it's not super short, not super long, as far as shoot 'em ups go. Um, an interesting thing about this game is you might have noticed it's all 3D. The actual gameplay is always considered a 2D field, so you don't need to worry too much about the actual camera stuff. It gets some complaints because of the camera stuff. I don't find it a big deal. When the game does its fancy camera pans and stuff, you're not in active gameplay generally. Um, there is a boss that, you know, the screen's panning around. I don't really find it to be a big issue, gameplay-wise. <laughs> um, one of the big differences in higher difficulties is that a lot of things don't or barely shoot bullets in easy mode, which is why it's not really bullet hell anymore. Um, if you put it on hard difficulty, you will immediately see that, you know, there'll be a lot more bullets. And I'll show you hard mode briefly. Um, <laughs> it took me four credits to beat the game on easy mode. I'm decent at shoot-em-ups. This game is not super hard on, you know, on easy anyway. So if you've played shoot-em-ups and, you know, this game is nowhere near, say, well, on easy, it is nowhere near Gradius 3 in difficulty. So if you enjoy shoot-em-ups, I do encourage you to give this a try. Um, you will need an Xbox 360. It is region free, though. You just need to find a disc. Um, I believe you can find the Wonder Swan, not Wonder Swan, Wonder Price version of the game for about $35 shipped to the United States anyway. Uh, the Wonder Price version is, you know, the full version of the game just has an ugly case to annoy collectors like myself. Um, <laughs> not exactly sure how expensive the full proper version is, probably around 60 so yeah, this is our first boss fight, and this is the first time where panning is a significant thing. But if we really, if you pay attention and know that you are always playing on a 2D field despite, you know, pans and stuff, it's really not too hard. What is kind of hard is my cat sitting and obscuring half of the screen, but that's okay. It's a horizontal, or it's a vertical shooter, so he's not obscuring much of the playable area. Who's in the little obscure if the case in the area? So yeah, nothing too hard yet on easy mode. Um, you know, we've got some simple patterns here. Um, <laughs> the game has a great range of difficulty. Um, I really like that about it. So easy mode, very easy to get into. Um, 
and simple controls and simple scoring system too. Um, you pretty much just want to kill everything and kill it fast as possible because I don't believe there's any form of boss milking at this point and there's no... Um, you do get a bonus by killing stuff faster so you pretty much just have to play well and so that's all you have to do and I kind of enjoy that as a score mechanic honestly. I don't really dig doing too much fancy friction stuff and um, I don't like the even just the concept of boss milking just you know sitting around and letting a boss attack you a ton instead of actually defeating it so you get more points that's just uh, not a fan of that even in concept um, but I usually don't go too much for score so I guess if you're a high score hunter I'm sure you probably do not think very highly of my opinion but uh, just as far as an, a fun shoot 'em up I really enjoy this game um, the music is very good by the way and as far as the 3D, I generally am not a big fan of 3D art for stuff like this, but uh, in order to go <coughs> um, 60 frames per second on a 360, it's got a very simple um, look to everything. Like, the enemies are basically minimalist art, and it has kind of a cool look to it. And there really isn't aren't any frame drops you know there's no performance issues due to being greedy or anything which is you know the primary issue um the game doesn't have a bit of slowdown whenever there's too many bullets on screen you know it's a gameplay mechanic more than it is uh, anything else and there are these hidden wonder witches for a fairly tiny amount of extra score um you just have to shoot certain points and go collect them I always get hit by the attack. I just never see it coming. I don't know what's wrong with me. I guess it's because of the green shots and the grass, maybe? Oh, and those F things, those are basically bombs, but we don't have proper bombs. Um, you know, you just collect those, like, item pickups, they'll eventually disappear. Um, I'm not a... I, I don't know, it just seems kind of a weird mechanic. It's not a proper bomb. Instead of a bomb, you have this thing that blocks, sh um, that blocks shots. Uh, there is no auto bomb option in this game because of that, which is a little unfortunate. But I mean, you'd be practically invincible if this game had auto bomb with the uh, shield thing, just because of how effective it is. And I generally like um, auto bomb is one of my favorite accessibility features as far as bullet hell games go, because it, um, at least personally, I. I've, I'm pretty terrible at timing when I should use a bomb. I'm pretty much always pressing the bomb button right as I die, not right before. So, an auto bomb basically gives me twice as much health, or, you know, however many bombs you have. Extra health. <laughs> and it just, it also, you know, just simplifies the game, which, you know, just lets people focus on dodging and shooting. And some of the bosses are alright. I like this fight with the big laser mirror here. And, um, so in the advanced mode, the biggest differences are instead of having a fixed um, weapon, you collect power ups, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, not too many modern shoot em ups seem to do those power ups. I, I sort of miss those old days when, you know, you had. You know, you had your blue pickup, which was your laser, and you had a red one, which is your boring normal shot, and then you had, you know, the green one, which has those wavy ones that move with your ship. Um, the, the wavy ones are my favorite, honestly. Um, and, you know, you had the option pickups, and I like stuff like that. This is another boss that gets sort of weird with the um, 2D plane, but it's really not a huge deal. The only- t I have had a little trouble in this boss with bumping into those orbs. There's a certain camera angle where you can touch the orbs, and it- Like, I'm just never sure when they have collision physics or not. But if you just stay the heck away from them, it's not a big deal. I guess you're kind of supposed to stay away from enemies in a bullet hell game. Though I think you should notice, like, on this difficulty, it's not even- bullet hell, which is cool. Like, I really like when games have really wide difficulty options, like, that cater to completely different skill sets. Like, generally when I play a shoot 'em up I'll start it on easy and, you know, auto-bomb and stuff, and then I'll gradually take up the difficulty as, you know, 
I'll try to get a one credit clear on easy, and then I'll start out normal and try to one credit clear that. Like, I like being able to progress like that. Because, you know, to have a proper high end of difficulty, you kind of need to have something harder than is, you know, it's... I don't know how to explain this, but... Um, I wouldn't want to start on a hard difficulty in a bullet hell game, because to have that really cool, really impressive difficulty, um, it's sort of not conducive to practice, like when you're just starting out, so it's really nice to have those difficulty options. I've been meaning to do like a blog post and explaining, like, I think a lot of people have a lot of improper impressions of bullet hell games, like, they think it's just complete impossible to get difficulty from the get-go, and I don't see much appreciation for the difficulty modes that a lot of games have, and a lot of games do a really good job of having extremely wide uh, breadth of difficulty. So, apparently those can kill you. I've never bumped into one of those before. Yeah, that's, this is the part I was talking about where I'm never quite sure if I can bump into those. Like, now I can't bump into them. And so that is one instance where it's, why, why am I so bad? Um, this is one instance where the camera angle is actually kind of annoying. Um, I'm not sure if there really is another part I would consider annoying. This lone boss fight is definitely the worst part of the camera, in my opinion. And it's pretty much over. So... I think we're about halfway through the game at this point. Um, if I die again, I'll treat this like a one credit um, game. Like, I'd, the game's not super long. But it's Parker. Parker. Parker, I can't see. Get down. Honey. There you go. Alright. If you want to have added difficulty to shoot him up, get a cat. Very effective difficulty answers. Very, very effective. Very right, Parker. Yes. Really love the music in this. And everything, all the bad things are purple. The, Developers must have issues with the color purple. The developer of this is Quote. Um, I think that's how you pronounce that. They also have Ginger Force on 360. I am not entirely sure if Ginger Force is um, region free. I'll look that up. Um, I don't worry about region too much. I just bought a Japanese 360 because I didn't really want that to be a big deal. Um, all I want my 364 was shoot 'em ups, and that's all I really had for it. Um, it came with Halo Reach, that's about it. It's actually the Reach limited edition console. I think this is the first game on YouTube I've played on my 360. Um, <coughs> I don't usually show off shoot 'em ups, they're a little. They're not everybody's cup of tea, but I thought I would show this one off because, you know, it's not a cave game. Everybody knows cave, at least if you're into shoot 'em ups, you already know cave. I thought I would show this one off because it's a, you know, lesser known developer. It's really good. It's really. It's region free, so. and fairly cheap, so. It's pretty easy to pick up. I'm not sure if it has a digital version. I don't really... I'm not entirely sure how the whole digital thing works on 360. I know a lot of shoot 'em ups do not have digital versions. Oh, also, um, I almost forgot to mention this. The game does have some stuff that like remind me a lot of some older uh, shoot 'em ups. Like these guys war warping around here right, reminds me a lot of Gra or not Gradius, um, Galaga. Very different. Um, and there's also a bit later on that's like an octagonal like cube, not cube, cubes aren't octagonal. It's like a... Parker. Get down. Um, it's like a cylinder of space invaders and like when you clear one part of the cylinder, like it moves you to the next one, it's pretty cool. In fact that may be coming up pretty soon, I guess I'll try to show you that one. I guess I'll just keep playing until I run out of this credit. Um, Yes, hello, Parker. Actually, I don't think I wasted four credits on my first win. Um, I forgot to mention, this game... Um, this game does that thing where it starts you off with no credits, and then as you gain score, like it adds to like a global score tally, and then you level up the options menu. It's kind of weird. Like It gives you more credits to play it with, and it also unlocks more things like... Um, Parker, please. Um, more options, like, um, I haven't unlocked anything too fancy with the options yet, but, like, there's a whole bunch of hidden sections in the options. I haven't, um, I couldn't find, actually, what all of the, the 
levels of menu to do. It's a little difficult to find all the information you need for this game. Um, I did find, there's nice guides that tell you about score. Um, you can usually find that for match and shoot them up. You know, a good way to um, do the high score stuff. Um, oh, and for the Wonder Swan color games, the Cardinal Sins has some really weird conditions that you kind of need a guide to figure out. Like, you need to perform certain tasks related to which sin you're, you know, playing through. And it's pretty cool, but kind of Byzantine. See, and some of these bosses are kind of a joke in easy mode, as you can kind of see. <laughs> I haven't completed the game in hard mode yet. Um, I just sort of wanted to get through a normal playthrough and an advanced playthrough. There's also time trial mode, which is the main game. It's like, there's no difficulty settings in that. It It's the normal game with, <coughs> um, I think it must be like normal difficulty. It, it wasn't the hardest mode for sure. Um, and it had, uh, knocking during this boss is gonna get me killed. There we go. Um, time trial. So in time trial, you have a clock and it constantly ticks down, and it's the full game instead of you know like a five-minute score trial or anything like that. But uh, your time goes down when you die. You have infinite lives, but you lose a fairly significant, well, not too significant amount of time when you die. And so you get more time as you go on. Uh, this is the space invader thing. It's even got the UFOs at the top. Um, so, the time trial is pretty interesting. I, I've never seen a time trial mode quite like that, actually. Usually it's just, you know, a separate mode where you um, only have X minutes to complete it, and st instead of trying to get to the end of the normal game before the time runs out. So it's a pretty cool twist on that. I think there's a pretty good amount, variety of modes in this thing for around, you know, 35 bucks. There's the two Underswan color games. There's, you know, this normal mode. There's three difficulty modes per mode. Um, mode squared there. And there's the advanced mode and the time trial mode. And it has that sort of, the feel of progression because of the, you know, unlocking more credits and stuff. So you can't just credit feed your first playthrough. You're probably not going to survive your first playthrough unless you're really good. Um, I'm fairly good at shoot 'em ups not, you know, super amazing. I just, I die stupid ways. Um, and it took me three or four, I want to say, playthroughs, and I had, like, either two or three credits when I won, I think. And then I unlocked the fourth credit I have now on that run. You need to go, you need to get a pretty decent score to start unlocking stuff. Like, well, I guess it's sort of exponential. Like, I unlocked my first credit after my first serious-ish run, and that wasn't even super far. But the pacing of the credits you earn is pretty good. I kind of wonder if people wouldn't, like, if it isn't a mistake to give people unlimited credits to start with, because people, you know, like, they just credit feed through the main game, they're like, oh, that's it, this is a dumb game, it's so easy. But then it's too hard when you can't credit feed, and I don't know. I guess it can't appeal to everybody, but, uh, this game does have fairly broad as far as shoot 'em ups go. Um, possibility to play. Oh, right. I forgot. You can change speeds. It uses up a little bit of your block meter for some reason. I am usually just fine at maximum speed on easy mode um, because there's no, you know, super dense patterns. And it's not like crazy fast. Like, uh, I can never use the fastest speed in Gradius 3 because it's just pretty crazy. There's some decent variety in how these bosses work out. This is a pretty weird one. Also, those F things, um, instead of those, sometimes you'll get power up in advanced mode. I kind of meant to die and show you advanced mode already, but I guess I forgot that the game isn't really that hard on easy mode. Like, I don't know. I guess I had more trouble with it before. That makes sense. You know, you play things and you get better. I guess that's supposed to how things are, right? Yeah. Excuse me. And you can leave those F things bouncing around for a while, but they will eventually expire. 
so that you can't really keep them quite like bombs. We're actually a fair way into this at this point. I have no idea how decent my scores are. Like, I never play these things for score. <clears throat> I should try sometime. Oh yeah, the story is that there's like bad stuff happening on the moon. That's the moon, by the way. We've got some chilling, ominous music here. We're going to space. Well, we're already in space, but... I think that's my credit count to the bottom right. I'm not entirely sure what those symbols are, honestly. Ugh, I keep wanting to talk about advanced mode, but I can't because I'm not dead yet. Maybe I should just die. Yeah, I think I'll just die. Um, there's still another few levels of this air or few areas. Like we go into the moon, we fight the final boss. I don't really need it. Come on. Er, no, I don't want to continue, actually. Wait, I'm not sure if it... You know, I'll just, I'll get a game over just to be entirely sure. I'm not sure if my score gets... Oh, right, I already lost my score. Whatever. Oh, good. We got Fragment. See, let's take a look at our options here. Um, <laughs> you can pick how many stocks you get. Oh! Weird. I don't think I had the four stocks thing. And you can, oh, right. You can unlock later stages. Um, the ranking off, like you don't get, you can't be in ranked um, if you know you use cheaty options as you might expect. Generic sound options. There's this effect. No, I don't want that. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what that is. I guess turn off visual effects, probably. I don't even know what that hidden one is. I guess that's what hidden means. So yeah, let's take a look. Come on. I'm not sure why there's a loading screen for the menu there. So let's take a look at advanced, on hard. There's, I guess, uh, there's, um, there must be a very hard option I don't even have yet. So yeah, in, <laughs> in advanced mode, you start off with the, um, uh, yeah, see, so on hard difficulty, it is a proper bullet hell game, finally. Um, here we go. There are these power-ups. You start with these lame weapons, and then you get even better ones as time goes on. Though, unfortunately, your wide laser um, slowly loses uh, range. It's more shots and wider, but you lose range. And um, as you power up, you lose some of the bullet blocky stuff. Like, it goes down to, I think, 60 instead of 100, eventually. Damn it. We're never going to have any decent power-ups if we keep dying. You lose your power-ups when you die, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, I'm not very good at this on hard mode, because it's, you know, actually hard. And I haven't practiced, which is another factor. Practiced easy, plenty. Um, oh, another thing, the advanced mode... The difference in scoring in advanced mode is that when you block shots, these little purple score things start to spawn. Ugh. Ah. And if you're not careful, it's uh, really easy to run out of that shield stuff. The shield is like almost not even needed in easy mode, but <laughs> there's some patterns you'll really want it for in hard mode. As you can see, a lot more intense, and I really like that about this, like I was saying. I really like that you can pick your difficulty and take your time, learn the general stuff, learn your controls, you know, they're simple controls, but still. And then, you know, gradually pile on the difficulty. See, we already lost a credit. And a lot of stuff, like, isn't even a factor in easy mode, like, a lot of stuff doesn't fire bullets. Also, for some reason, changing your speed reduces your um, shield thingy, but not very significantly. Like you, ah. as long as you don't aren't currently shielding, it comes back in like a second. I'm not really sure why they bothered to reduce your shield, honestly. 
Oh, and another thing in advanced mode, there's actually a higher, um, there's like an overdrive weapon. Like, the max level of your weapon is exactly the same as it is in normal mode, you know, the weapon we were seeing before. But it can actually go one level higher as like an overcharge that like is timed. And um, that mode, you're like way more powerful and it's pretty cool. I'm never gonna actually see that weapon because I keep dying. But it's pretty easy to get if you're to play on advanced and easy, which is a thing you can do. So like advanced easy isn't super much harder than, you know, normal easy. It's just, you know, more advanced. Um, controls and scoring system. So it's pretty cool to keep the difficulty independent of the control mode, like... I really like how they do that stuff. So yeah, we've seen most of what need to see, we need to see and talk about here. Um, yeah, this is Ishatos. I definitely think if you're a shoot-em-up fan, and, you know, you've got a 360, I definitely recommend this one. And Ginger Force is kind of like this, and also a lot not like this. It has this shop that like lets you buy power, like different equipment and stuff. It's a lot more con like a console game than an arcade game. This is like this is like an arcade port. It is not actually an arcade port. It's a native 360 game, but it acts like an arcade game that has you know different modes and stuff for a console release. Uh, Ginger Force is like. You know, you earn money as you go through it, and you buy new parts and weapons and stuff. And it's pretty cool, but I haven't gotten too far in it. It's definitely an interesting thing, though. Um, it even has- it lets you play as the Ishato ship. I'm not sure if that's a bonus because I have an Ishato save, or it's just like a native feature. But it's also by quote. Ow. See, I wasn't even ready that, for that because this boss doesn't usually shoot bullets like that. And I have to say, once again, the music, freaking awesome. I think the first print releases have the soundtrack, so that might be a good reason to try and track that down. One thing I'm not entirely a fan of is the bullets kind of push you back when you're using the shield, so you gotta be careful with that. I guess it's not entirely a bad thing, it just makes you think, which isn't bad. But I'm bad at thinking, as you can obviously see. Ah. I'm just embarrassing myself here. Um, so yeah, that's the Chateaus. Check it out if you like.